Over the past couple of years, working from home has become the new norm, but finding the space for it isn't always easy. And even then, you still have to enjoy being in it, which is why in this video, I'm going to be transforming a subscriber's almost unusable narrow storage room into the ultimate productivity paradise. This room belongs to subscribers James and Marcella and is part of their one and a half bedroom Sydney apartment, with this room being barely suitable for sleeping. Despite being only the width of a king size mattress, this room has become James's office as a software developer. And after the recent birth of their son, this space also now needs to provide storage for an influx of baby items and diapers, plus all of the tools and household items that currently occupy the room. It also looks like this workstation also serves as James's gaming station, so it's safe to say that he probably spends a lot of time here. But with a bog standard IKEA desk that's 600 millimeters deep, it doesn't leave him much space to get in and around his setup. At the other end of the room, things are also particularly cramped with a metal shelving unit placed behind the door, meaning that the door can't fully open, which doesn't really help with feelings of claustrophobia in this already tiny space. So as fans of minimalist Scandi interiors, my challenge was to transform this impossible room into the dream workspace that it was always meant to be. I first had to model the space in SketchUp from the dimensions that James provided by extruding up the walls. From his sketch, it appears that the entryway probably has an 838 door, and I estimated the size of the window using the photos by scaling off the items around it for reference. From the hours I've sunk into browsing furniture online, it looks to me like the desk is the IKEA Lag Captain Adils combo, which costs a mere £39 here in the UK, making it an extremely affordable and versatile choice thanks to its screw on legs. Using SketchUp's 3D warehouse, I managed to find the majority of the rest of his setup, such as the PS4 monitor and peripherals, as well as the metal shelving unit, which now provides me with a useful idea of how the room feels so I can start my process. At this point, I was starting to feel like I'd bitten off a little bit more than I can chew, as the room is just so narrow to use as a workspace. I thought an easy fix would be to rotate the desk against the window, but then you're exposed to the bright sunlight directly behind your screen and your back is left directly facing the door, which isn't really comfortable either. So out of the two options, I can kind of see why James positioned his setup how it currently is. On top of this, the shelving unit doesn't even let the door fully open and placing this anywhere else would simply block the light coming from the window. Despite feeling like this room was destined for failure, I decided to give it a go, starting by moving the shelving away from the door swing. From a designer's viewpoint, shelving should only be used to display items, not store them. So I swapped this out for a full height, 400 mm deep kitchen cabinet to give James and Marcella ample room to hide and organize all of this stuff, as well as all of their new baby gear. Thanks to the room's generous 2.8 meter height, this meant that I could utilize the full height of the room and continue this run of cabinetry above the door swing, saving the single cabinet from being awkwardly isolated in the middle of the room. This leaves a comfortable nook for the door swing, which not only makes the room now much easier to get in and out of, but it also looks a lot neater too when propped open. It then seems pretty logical for James's desk to fit in this gap that's created between the window and the cabinet, seeing as it leaves ample room for a desk setup. Despite being a fairly standard depth, the previous IKEA desk felt too deep for this space, but by reducing its size just by 100 millimeters, it makes a world of difference for getting in and around the desk. To optimize this space as much as possible, I decided to place a 500 mm deep oak veneered kitchen worktop on top of two 400 mm wide kitchen units, providing a discrete 100 mm overhang. By using cabinetry instead of table legs, this ties it into the design language of the other cabinetry and provides even more storage. And with the reduced depth of the desk and the 100 mm overhang, it makes the desk much easier to get around too. This immediately makes the space feel much larger than before. But what's nice is that this could be adapted however you wished, as you could forego the cabinets entirely and place the worktop on legs or brackets, potentially allowing this huge 1800 mm wide desk to provide enough space for two people. 
With the layout mostly finished, I decided to give James's workstation a makeover to serve as some inspiration to work towards. For this space, I thought that the Setu chair from Herman Miller would be the perfect choice because its thin white frame and mesh construction makes the chair almost transparent, which only helps in mitigating feelings of claustrophobia in this already narrow room. I then modelled in a Grove made desk shelf and desk pad and combined it with a 32 inch 4K gaming monitor, whilst adding in some new peripherals such as a Logitech MX Keys keyboard and an MX Master Mouse, as well as a pair of Kanto YU6 speakers. I was really beginning to feel like this whole setup was coming together, so I decided to give it a test render and I was really happy with how it turned out, but I realised that there are still a few things that need addressing. Firstly, because the window is so close to this setup, this is going to cause a lot of glare on the monitor, so you need a way to be able to quickly control the natural light as it changes throughout the day. Venetian blinds are great for this as they help to diffuse the light and also allow for quick adjustments, whilst also adding some character and texture to the room. Ideally, the desk also needs some task lighting, so I added in some LED strips to the back of the monitor that could bounce diffused light off the wall, and then I added a strip under the desk too to provide the setup with some accent lighting. Finally, as bare bulbs tend to be quite harsh, I swapped these out for a circular 5000 Kelvin LED panel light, which provides a diffused light that's similar to what you'd experience from an overcast sky through a window. Then finally, to add some character, I added in a picture ledge and frame above the desk, as well as some plants and general office items, and with those changes made, I started up the final renders to bring this whole design to life. The V-Ray plugin for SketchUp does a great job of simulating light and texture in the model, and the images turned out great. But as with all photographs, I imported them into Photoshop with two material maps that really help when it comes to editing. The first thing I did was overlay and stretch one of my custom wallpapers onto the monitor, as well as using a random photo from my Instagram as a black and white print for the picture frame. After testing some colour options, I settled with a white theme, and then I made a few edits to the lighting and materials, which I could do quickly using the material maps that I imported at the start of the edit. Finally, all that was really left for me to do was to make a few final adjustments and tweaks and then repeat this process for the remaining images, and the concept was done. From all the small spaces I've worked with, this one was probably the most challenging, but I am absolutely thrilled with how it looks and the fact that it works with pretty much no compromises. Configurations like this one make small spaces work, and by choosing to optimise the space that you live in, rather than simply moving, it can potentially save you from being stuck paying off a large home that you may not really need. If you're anything like me and you're really interested in getting the very most out of life, something that really opened my eyes regarding this is a book that I would highly recommend called The Almanac of Naval Ravikan, which you can now listen to using today's sponsor, Audible. To me, happiness is not about positive thoughts. It's not about negative thoughts. It's about the absence of desire, especially the absence of desire for external things. Naval reinforces this idea of intentional thinking throughout his book, and as someone who struggles to find the motivation to read, Audible has allowed me to listen to loads of audiobooks each year, as I can listen to them while driving, working out or travelling, and even listen to them at double speed. Audible just makes reading super easy, and you can start listening to Naval's book or pretty much any book with a completely free 30-day trial by visiting audible.com slash Daniel Titchener or by texting Daniel Titchener to 500 500. This is honestly one of the most remarkable books that I've ever read, and I always find myself recommending it, so seeing as you can give it a free listen using an Audible trial, check it out or check out any of my other recommendations using the link down in the description. Thanks Audible for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.